Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video we are passing through the small town of Belzoni, Mississippi. That's a catfish statue on the left. You'll see those scattered around town. I guess it's the catfish capital. It's very early in the morning, and I was just rolling through town checking things out on my way to Clarksdale. And this is the star of our video today. In some ways, just an ordinary old building, not very interesting. But compared to the prefab metal buildings and generic architecture that we tend to build now, especially in small towns, I think it's a real beauty with a lot of character. I was barely able to make out the name on that faded old sign and it says Cullender Machinery Company. It was a machine shop slash machinery company that sold equipment to the ag industry. And remember, this is the heart of the Mississippi Delta, which was of course, a big cotton and rice growing area. The business was operated by a man named Adolf Cullender, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly, but Mr. Cullender was born in Sweden and lived from 1869 until 1952. He's buried in the Belzoni Cemetery. In the 1940 census, he lived in a house worth $2,500 at 125 Hayden Street with his wife Lolly, who was also born in Sweden and who was two years older than he was. Adolf had two years of college and he earned $6,000 in 1939, which was pretty darn good for that time. Remember, that was the Great Depression and the average annual income in the U.S. was about $1,368. By the way, the census information was protected by privacy laws for 72 years and didn't become public until 2012. But Adolf was more than a machinist, he was also an inventor with at least two patents. Here's a drawing of his 1924 patent for a cotton tramper. He would have been 55 at the time. Here's his other patent from 1931 for a cotton needle, which from what I understand helped strip the cotton. To me, these patents show that not only did he understand the machines that he sold, but he also had a deep understanding of how they worked, or maybe how they didn't work, out in the fields. I found records for his machine shop as early as 1910. Business was incorporated in 1940 and was still in business after Adolf's death in 1952. And I know that because there was a lawsuit filed against the company in 1955. It seems that the company sold an irrigation pump that failed, causing the loss of a rice crop worth $29,000 in damages. Cullender Machinery was found not liable in the lower court and in the appeals court because they were simply the reseller of the pump, not the manufacturer. They were found liable for a replacement pump at a cost of uh, between five dollars and $6,000. Notices to dissolve the corporation were filed in the 1980s and it was dissolved in 1990. Here are the photographs I got on this day. I imagine them as a set. And here's a small test print of one of them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to visit my website, keithdotson.com.